Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is most frequently asked questions answered by Blue Bar support team. Yeah, we present this webinar regularly. Yeah, we yeah, uh, show questions or answer questions that our customers yeah, send to the uh, Blue Bar support team. That should be a help for you. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Luba Software. For instance, the technical content of the website, uh, German and English webinars, customer projects, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today, and I also present a part of the webinar. The other part of the webinar will be presented by my colleague Stefan Hoffmann. He is the head of customer support. Yeah, he uh, prepared the questions and the presentation. Yeah, and we will answer your questions. When I present, then Stefan uh, answers your question yeah, and vice versa. Okay, you can ask questions yeah, by clicking that button. I, I switch off my camera, but you can see the full screen. Yeah, that button with the question mark, then you can enter the question here, present, and we will receive your question. Okay, that should be all. I start the presentation in the program. The first question for the day is, how do I set an uni-actual load transfer for a plate? In order to specify an uni-actual load transfer for a plate, you can assign autotropic properties to the surface. We prepared three surfaces for, for today. That's a standard uh, surface. And the others are, yeah, this one is an autotropic thickness for isotropic material. And this surface has a autotropic material model for constant thickness. Those are the two options yeah, to yeah, consider a uni actual load transfer. So we have yeah the sorry the same yeah surfaces the same loads uh, to compare the results later. So let's double click on that surface. Uh, as I mentioned already, uh, standard stiffness type, uniform thickness, and an isotropic material. So then let's double click on that surface where the yeah, stiffness type standard standard defined. Uh, thickness, the thickness is shape autotropy uh, and the material is isotropic. Let's click the edit button for the yeah, thickness with material. Now uh, you can see for the thickness type, the shape autotropy is you know, was defined or selected. So let's go to this dialog where was entered 200 millimeters for the effective thickness for X direction. That should be the direction where the you know, load transfer should should be and for the secondary direction where it's defined a small value you can't enter zero here and it's not possible to calculate it are there, there are numerical problems mm, yeah important hint for the self-weight definition there are different possibilities you uh, can select be selected uh, determined from parameters then an aver average is calculated here and it's not what we want 
And there are also user-defined self-weight where I can enter yeah, the self-weight in kilogram per square meter. We use the middle option, the thickness, thickness 200 millimeters. Okay, then we can leave the dialog and select the plate on the right side. Stiffness type, standard, constant thickness, but uh, we have uh, defined the material of thickness, autotropic. Let's take a look at it with the edit button. You can see yeah, that the autotropic uh, material model was defined and the user defined material is checked. So let's go to this dialog, autotropic linear elastic surface. And yeah, you can see that there are different modulus of elasticity, elasticity for the different directions. And for, for a uni actual load transfer, you need to yeah, change the modulus of elasticity for the, of the secondary load direction you know, by entering a very small value. You can also uh, specify or you need to uh, specify a very small value for the shear moduli in the secondary support directions. And the Poisson's ratio yeah, can be set to zero. So let's leave dialogue. So we calculate all. So, and you can see the different results. For example, the basic internal force, Mx, where yeah, you can see for the autotropic models, the highest value for Mx in the middle of the plates. And there are yeah, very small support reactions, reactions for the yeah, secondary directions. And for the standard plate, the highest values are on the longer sides. Yeah? And for these models on the shorter side, the Values are not zero, yeah, because of the FEM, but they are very small. MY, yeah, I can see very small values, yeah, and that's the reason for the small support reactions. If I click on MXY, you can see where yeah, there is a high torsional stiffness for the for the standard standard surface but not for the autotropic surfaces okay that should be all for the first question and the first model we turn to the next model the next question is how can i quickly create a surface model from any cross section Okay, that's a uh, typical cross section that was uh, imported from the library U200. Let's go to the edit button and the library. Um, yeah, a hint you can't create surface models from cross section from, from massive cross sections yeah, but for thin walled standardized and so on build up yeah, where you can see that are uh, yeah, different surfaces up should be possible for the flange and the web and so on so let's try it with a right click the context menu is opened members and then at the bottom, 
generate the phases from members. Uh, and then you can see the web is now a surface and also the flange. And the thickness of the flange is yeah, 11.5 millimeters. That's yeah, the average from the original member or original uh, yeah, cross section. So, as I already mentioned, yeah, it's not possible to do it for such members. I double click on it anyway. That uh, cross section was defined in our section. You can go directly to our section with that button. So let's go left above to the base data. You can see the uh, analysis method, finite element analysis is checked. Yeah, and for those cross section, it's not possible to to uh, yeah, create a surface model in RFM, but for film well uh, analysis. Yeah, that's the other example. We try it for this one anyway. Right click, members, yeah, and you can see the option is grayed out. So I double click on the member on the right side section also in uh, uh, yeah section that was created in our section i press the button again to turn to our section so i turn to the base data again left above and uh, you can see it fin weld analysis it's checked okay and also parts and elements yeah, must be defined. So, and then you can uh, create a surface model. It's a quite new option. So, right click members and generate surfaces from member. And now you can see it is divided. Or, yeah, it's yeah, if a surface model is created. Thickness, four millimeters, geometry, uh, geometry type plane. And for the roundings, let's double click on one. Thickness, four millimeters, but the geometry type is quadrangle. Okay, that should be all for this question. We turn to the third question. The third question is how can I elastic couple elements? Yeah, there are different possibilities. For example, the line releases are possible or yeah, line hinges. In the case of uh, you, yeah, where our members uh, and, and surfaces are, are connected in one line, or where, where, you know, or where they are connected in the same line. But for this example, I showed it on the wireframe model. We have two members without any uh, eccentricity. Yeah, the center of the member is in the in the middle of the uh, yeah, member. This is a member of yeah, one meters width and the thickness is 300 millimeters concrete. And the member below is a solid member of timber. Now, this is valid for all three members. But where are defined different rigid links? That's the uh, possibility that I would like to introduce. You can see 
uh, Richard Links in the Navigator data on the left side. There are three Richard Links defined. To create a new Richard Link, you can do a right click on it, then New Richard Link. I double click on the first Richard Link. Now you can see there's no line hinge defined. That means, yeah, the connection is absolutely rigid. So then I double click in the middle. So you can see a line hinge is created. I press the edit button. In longitudinal direction and x direction, there is a, yeah, very high spring constant in the y direction and around the x axis where our small spring constants spring constants are created yeah that you can calculate the model that is this isn't instable so then we double click on that rigid link. Also a line hinge is created with a yeah, small spring constant in longitudinal direction. So let's take a look at the different results. Or I show again the load, you know, the same load, and then the results uh, uh, to display it a little bit better i turn to the navigator results and for the deformation i check lines you can see i switch off the releases you can see the different uh, deformations now the smallest de deformation is on the left side for the yeah rigid link without any, any uh, line releases or line hinges so uh, yeah quite uh, or higher deformation for the rigid link with the uh, yeah, line hinge with the high uh, spring constant i can see it again and the highest deformation with the rigid, rigid link with the yeah, smaller spring constant in longitudinal direction. So let's take a look at the releases. The forces, yeah, uh, the no normal forces in the longitudinal direction, it's a zero for the, for the rigid link. Um, yeah, we've got yeah, quite high values for the rigid link with the higher spring constant and a very small value for the rigid link with the uh, smaller uh, spring constant in longitudinal direction. Yeah, it's, uh, it's usual to have this uh, shear force or this uh, force, normal force uh, between the members for a composite beam. That's usually shear force affine. I switch on the shear forces in uh, reset. Now you can see the force in, in yeah, longitudinal direction. Uh, yeah, is shear force a thin? Okay, that should be all for that question. Stefan, you, yeah, you can, uh, I hand over, you can continue. Thank you, Andreas. I will continue with the next topic. So the next question is, can I generate the FE mesh of two? or multiple objects independently. 
So this question arises usually if you have a, a big solid which can, for example, represent the ground and then you have like a girder or a beam connecting to it uh, were represented by surfaces and a fine if image of this very thinner surfaces regarding to the solid next to each other because we propose that the solid mesh should be at least four up to eight elements per thickness it may of course be even finer and if you then have like a fine mesh in here connecting to the solid body it needs to be connected at fe mesh nodes and if we for example generate the mesh without any extra setting done to it then the mesh should have like such a most likely fine representation because the fine mesh of the surfaces needs to be guided and direct connected to the solid in the ground. Uh, this will lead to a high statistic of 3D elements, 47,000. And now the question was, if there is an option that uh, we do not need a fine mesh of the surfaces connected to the solid, and this is possible if you go into the mesh settings. You can uh, check the option that the independent mesh is preferred. And if you hit OK and apply, it will regenerate the mesh for you. And you can directly see that uh, there is no need to have a very fine mesh of the solid anymore. The preset is half a meter. And you can also see that the statistics uh, will lower it from 47,000 to 2,400. So you can imagine that uh, this is a way quicker in the calculation. And this will also give you the chance to have a better sorted mesh of the solid. There's also another setting you can do. So if you double click on the solid, you can check integrated objects. And if you go into the top of the integrated objects, you can also decide which objects should be integrated for a dependent mesh. You can also see it in the sketch on the right. And which objects should be integrated for the independent mesh. So this or these settings will most likely allow you to have a better optimized mesh and self-calculation times and of course the forces and the objects will still be connected with some uh, settings in the solver and distribute the forces into the connected objects but now without the need of an uh, of a same mesh okay let's go to the next example so the next question is what is the result b and are there special features in its application? So the result beam should always be known, usually from our customers who are always or already using RFM5 in the history. But maybe you are new to RFM6 and you are asking what may be the uh, member type of the result beam. So it's a beam without any stiffness. You can assign a cross -sect section in order to design it later on in the add-ons. But the cross section will not put any weight or any stiffness into the model. And so it allows you to most likely sum up forces of objects. So if you activate result beam, you can jump into the next tab, which allows you to define the type. So you can hit various settings in here. You can read them in the manual if you would like to know what is the specific topic about. And then you can also define what objects you would like to include or maybe to accept from including objects. The section as told is mainly meant to do a later on design. So in the first model what I would like to show you is the effective area of the result beam. So it is usually meant to be put into the center of um, um, integrated objects for this result beam. And it is uh, used to have, of course, then a certain height. So on the left, the beam is not going to the top of all surfaces. And on the right, the beam is going to the top of all surfaces. And which forces can be 
integrated. It's of course only the forces uh, in the effective area of the result beam. So if it's not long enough, uh, you can see that the normal force, which is summed up from top to bottom, will not start with a zero, but it is on the right with zero. And it will start with a value and then up to the bottom to a certain different value. So if you define a result beam, you should think about how long will it be in order to think about the effective area of the result beam. If you are curious about the integration size, you can uh, activate this as well in the basic objects, members parts, and then the check mark result beam. And of course, then it will uh, allow you to check the member forces and also the formation of some objects. If you would like to have more values, uh, then it is about to go into the mesh settings and the member settings, and then you can adjust the number of division for result diagrams. I have another model for you to present. So it's the result beam position. So let's go into the next model. Uh, it's like a, a system of a surface laying on four columns and some uh, ribs. And uh, what I would like to show you in this example is uh, that it is important uh, for three inner forces what the position of the result beam is. So if you check for the internal forces, uh, the three first normal force, shear force, and uh, the second shear force, you can quickly see that the position of the result beam uh, does not have any influence on the result which is displayed. But if you check on four moments, uh, most likely we will only compare the bending moment into the strong axis, uh, you can see that the result is influenced a lot by the position. And why is this the case? Uh, usually uh, your task is to put the result beam into the a centroid of the objects you would like to take care of. So the geometrical centroid. And uh, if you do so, you can get a moment or bending moment diagram, which uh, looks quite okay. Uh, it is related, of course, if you have line hinges at the start or not, because the beam is, once again, to put focus on just summing up inner forces of the surface or the objects it is taking care of. So it, the inner forces summed up are corresponding with the stiffness or the model in behind. And if you now move it topwards or bottomwards, uh, there is the influence of the lever arm of the normal force to the bending moment. So if you put it higher, you can see that the MY diagram will be influenced a lot. Same goes for if you put it down because the normal force will then be multiplied with the lever arm and increase your inner forces. So please take care when using the result beam and if you want to evaluate the forces that you put it onto the correct position. Last but not least, the last question for today's webinar is uh, how can I transfer support loads to another model? So I have uh, two models, one which is uh, a floor above the ground and one model which is the ground model. And usually, uh, sometimes depending on what you would like to achieve, you simply split your structure into different files. And of course, you would like to forward the support reactions you receive in the top of your building also into the bottom part. So this was already possible, uh, but uh, we improved now the functionality that you uh, also can now use the function. Uh, we provided also in RFM5 already that you can create so-called free loads. What is meant like this? Uh, if we jump into the second file, so it's the ground, you can already see that there are some uh, question mark loads. And uh, we now optimized or 
integrated another option into the load wizard, so the import support reactions wizard. Please take care that this wizard will only be shown if there is already a load case defined and if the two files are put into the same project folder in the global center. And please take care that if you multiply the file that you file save, a, save as under a different name because copy and pasting in Windows Explorer will not generate a unique model ID which is necessary because there's an improvement to often 5 that the models are linked to each other and this can only be done with the unique model ID. So if you check this bottom file you can see that I already created a support reaction so I connect the model of the floor which is uh, in the same project folder with a unique ID and then I told that I would like to transfer free loads. So this now was um, added to the drop down menu list uh, that you do not have to assign the node numbers and the lines manually. Now you are most likely free and only bound to the geometry and uh, since it is now only bound and geometrical projected into a certain direction, you should think about also uh, defining the surfaces where you would like to import the forces. So just imagine if you have a, a floor laying in here and also define a second surface, all these forces will penetrate into the global Z direction, whatever they can penetrate and uh, this may double the load if you have the same surface down below. So uh, you would have to think that of course, if the construct uh, of the part is only standing on one surface, uh, you have to uh, disable the old check and assign these loads to the corresponding surface. If you only have one plane in each model, you do not have to think about because then only the surface will be touched. And the last part, uh, you also uh, can then define only the varying distribution now, uh, but you can tell that the connection should be manually. So you could of course create the own assignment to an existing load case, or you do it automatically. And uh, usually uh, most times uh, using this function, uh, the only Z direction will be imported. Uh, so we will do it as follows. So the question marks will uh, begun if you hit F5 for example to start the calculation. So it will start the calculation of the so-called mother file, so the floor. And once we achieve these results, it will transfer them into our file and then also do the static calculation in our file in order to receive the results. So once we have the results, you can most likely quickly see now we just don't display them that we now have the forces being put into our floor model so where the door is there's nothing and only our column forces are being introduced and now the, the highest functionality increase i think once we have now these three loads is that once you go into the floor and for example double the forces which can be done in the uh, static analysis settings. Uh, I see I've already introduced this and so now we will just uh, lower it by a half. So if we now do not modify it, let's have a look, uh, 42 kilonewton into the Z direction. If we uh, disable it, hit F5, then you always have to think about that this model was not yet saved. So there's nothing told to the, to the floor below. And if we once hit save, uh, there should be a, a warning that the results will be deleted. So this is the question for the connected ground model, because now we told the program the new, new file has only one times loads. And if we jump into the ground model, you can see that there are question marks again. So of course it is now known to the link that the forces have changed. So we need to recalculate it once again. So it will once start the floor model in the background again, and it will calculate us the new values. So with this new possibility, it's most likely the closing of a gap to often five, but with the bigger advantage that uh, you now have also the link 
that it is linked to the file uh, which is connected. And if you change this file, then the forces will be updated automatically. So if you would not like to do it, uh, it should be able to uh, disconnect the generated loads uh, from the support reaction and also disconnect then the single loads and then the connection will be gone. But usually, depending on how you would like to design, it's a main advantage. All right, so uh, I am done and I will hand back to Andreas. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Stefan. An additional hint from my side, you can book your free online appointment, such as a product demonstration of our main programs, RFEM, RSTAP, uh, our wind, our section, or uh, about the add-ons or a specific add-on. Just scan that QR code or you can click on that link. You can find the PowerPoint slide on the same website where you can find the recording and the models. Yeah, in the next days, you will get an email with a link to that page. You will also get your attendee certificate. Yeah, and then you can go through the webinar again with the recording and the models as you want. Okay, that should be all. Also from my side, thank you for your attention. Thanks to Stefan for the, your presentation. I wish all a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.